Hello guys and welcome to the world of WWE. Today I'm doing my review for NXT TakeOver War Games 2019, an incredible show. I really enjoyed it. No, there wasn't a single bad match on the card. So yeah, let's start with the kickoff show. Angel, Scar Angel Garza defeated Isaiah Swerve Scott in 7 minutes and 35 seconds. It was a really good match, you know, fast place. Really a tame match. I was, I was quite surprised this was only like 7 minutes and 35 seconds. I thought it was like a 10 minute... Uh, match so it's probably the best match under 10 minutes I've seen it's either that or the Goldberg versus Brock Lesnar match versus May 33 one of those two so yeah it was a very enjoyable match of course Angel Garza got the victory with his finisher the win clip but it makes sense he's going to continue on right, having his rivalry with um Leo Rush they're probably gonna face uh each they're probably gonna have a match at and take over Portland because they've j they also confirmed Port. NXT TakeOver Portland at this event, which I think is the first time they ever did that I went to NXT TakeOver Portland, but okay. So, how about you do, come on, do another one in the UK, guys, you know, you've only done one. Not include NXT UK, come, on. come back to the O2, you know, <laughs> I'm joking, but, but I like it, but yeah. And also on the kickoff show, I might actually have to watch the full kickoff show because I only heard small nippets from the kickoff show. But only me and Yim was attacked backstage, so Rhea Ripley had to uh, give Dakota Kai this opportunity and trusted her to join the War Games match. So, yeah, but Angel Garza got the ring, makes sense. Let's get to the main show Team Ripley, which is, of course, Rhea Ripley, Candice Lorraine, Dakota Kai, and Tegan Knox defeated. Team Baszler, Shayna Baszler, Ia Shirai, Bianca Bella, and Kaylee Way in the first ever women's war games match. It lasted 27 minutes and 24 seconds. Yeah, it could have it lasted about half an hour, so it was alright. Yeah, but this match was really, really good. I really enjoyed it. So yes, um, uh, it was a really good match. Uh, when it came, ever Dakota Kai to come, uh, she she was about to go, and then she attacked Tegan Knox. So. And uh, they, she pretty much destroyed her knee, and that looked horrible. It legit, Dakota Kai as a heel. I was worried at first Dakota Kai would make sense as a heel, but now I'm happy because it. She looks like a proper heel. She feels like a proper heel. She even hit the general manager. So yeah, Tegan Knox couldn't complete compete because of his, her knee getting attacked, which makes a lot of sense to choose the knee, because uh, of course, uh, she had two correct. Career threatening knee injuries, I think. She does had one career threatening knee injury, but I think she had two. But yeah, and she kept banging the cage door. It was just really a tilt turn. But the problem with that, Tiga not Dakota Kai was sent backstage so she couldn't compete. And, and Tiga Knox can't compete. She was injured. So this means it was basically uh, Rhea Ripley and Candice the Way versus four people. So I was like, this is not, they're going to lose because of this. It's going to be quite an effective heel work. They will uh, lose. Um, and there was a problem when she, um, yeah, sure I hit like the, her splash, but it was a kick out or break up. It was a really good match. And surprisingly, we were playing Kanye's away, beat the odds to win the match. And I'm fine with that, to be honest, because no one looked weak. Everyone felt like a star, like Shayna Baszler's team. They're not going to get ruined. They're f the NXT UK Women's Champion, she's going to be back on top. Um, Bianca Bella is a future NXT Women's Champion. No, this isn't going to affect her. Really. Io Shirai is just great. Uh, Shayna Mace has been champion for over a year. Like, it's not going to affect them. And it, it affects Dakota Kai in a good way because she's now built as a legit heel. It affects Tegan Knox greatly because she's now a really good and over baby face. And... It affects Candice away and Rhea, Candice away good because she lasted from the very beginning to the end and make Rhea Ripley good good because she pinned the champion. It's a win-win in my opinion. So, yeah, it was a really good match. Very much enjoyed it. Next up was Pete Dunne who defeated Killian Dane and Damian Priest to become the number one contender for the NXT Championship at Survivor Series. The match started in 19 minutes and 56 seconds. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. A very good, fast-paced match. I loved the pace. It was really good. And the end of the match was basically, um... Well, um... Uh, Pete Dunne had a sleeper hold on Killian Day. Killian Day did the slow and drop to Damian Priest. So she... 
Pete Dunne pushed Green Day out of the way and covered Damien Priest for the victory in a very good match. Pete Dunne feels like a legit star. He's going to have a great match at Survivor Series. So, yeah, I really, really enjoyed it. So, yeah, that's something to say. It was a really good match. Next up is Finn Balor defeating Matt Riddle in 14 minutes and 21 seconds. The shortest match of the night, but it was still a, apart from the kickoff show one, but it was still a very great match. It was very enjoyable. Um, Finn Balor slightly changed the entrance because when he does that, he only does it like once at the stage and once at the, um, on the uh, top, right wing, and the crowd's like lung out. So, yeah, but it was a very good match. Finn Balor looks jacked. I gotta say that. Yeah. He just looks so good. He it, it made it was really good to have him had those two months off. So yeah, and it was a very good, enjoyable match. So yeah, and of course Finn Balor got the victory. Not with the coup de grace, but it's like sixteen nineteen DDT finisher. Sorry, I've just dropped my phone. Now let's get to the main event. Uh, Team Champa defeated the Undisputed Era. So I like the way they did it in they won the War Games match in 38 minutes and 26 seconds. I like the way they did it with the four opponent not coming with them on the cage. And the first two, by the way, were Sebastian Champa and um, um, Roderick Strong. I I blanked on his name like Shinsuke Nakamura that always does. <laughs> so yeah, um, it was a really good match. I like that. Uh, they were in the cage, could build suspense. It was a really good match, very enjoyable. And when it was the final person, which is uh, Team Chubb's fourth person, we hadn't been confirmed whether he was in it or not. So when the countdown gun, the timer stopped, you didn't come, no one come. They must be like, ha. it was like, ha, he, he, he they, they don't have anyone. We're gonna win. Then Kevin Owens' music hit and he comes. Oh, I jumped. I literally was like, oh, with a weird scream. It was weird. It was weird, like quiet scream. It was weird. Yeah, so team, so the team was uh, Tommaso Ciampa, Tommaso Ciampa, Keith Lee, Dominic Dodgecoe, and Kevin Owens versus who defeat against the Undisputed Era, Adam Cole, Bobby Fish, Carl Riley, and Roderick Strong. It was an incredible match. It was so good. Probably the... Is it the best match I've seen all year? It's between that or Cole versus Gargano. Because, my word, it was incredible. They wanted to kill each other. <sighs> it felt like that. Anyway, and, the custom, and I'm not going to... The reason why I haven't given a load of detail about these matches. Because I want you guys to watch them. Yes, you know, they're ended. Won't make them any less good. <laughs> So yeah, it was an incredible match. It ended when Tommaso Ciampa, uh, basically it was really cool because, um, um, Dominic died to put, uh, Roderick Strong over the table, then he put Keith Carl Wiley over the table, then Keith Lee put, uh, Bobby Fish through the table with a power on the top of and Team Tommaso Ciampa ha had Adam Cole at the very top of the cell. He did his weird fall and finish, I think, I don't know what it's called, through two tables. And he was lying on him for the one, two, three. Tommaso, Team Tommaso Champion gets the victory. It was incredible. There was even this spot where um, Kevin Owens tried to do his like power drive on the metal part, and uh, but instead, Callum Cole hit a Panama Sunrise onto the metal. But I was like, oh my goodness, this is incredible. So. Yeah, so here's why I think everyone is going to go after this match. I have a feeling that um, this leads to a lot of good rivalries for uh, the other titles. So, uh, Tommaso Chen versus Adam Cole. Probably having their next day going. In the future, I can see Kevin Owens versus Roderick Strong. In the future, I can see um, maybe even the team of Keith Lee and Dominic Dijakovic or Keith Lee and Matt Widow going against the Undisputed for the titles. There's so many possibilities. So, yeah, this was an incredible match. I would recommend. I, I, overall, this show was incredible. I would give it a 9 out of 10. Yes, I said it. 9 out of 10. It was incredible. I loved it. So, yeah. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to like the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. Turn notifications. Never miss video. I'll see you all in the next video. By the way, hopefully today you will also begin Survivor Series 2019 predictions. So, yeah. I hope you enjoyed this video. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.